Uh, greetings and salutations. Hello, from, everyone. From uh, London with uh, Josh Riding here, my friend. Uh, just came in from Doncaster mm -hmm. to discuss a new perfume that I'm currently working on. Now, we, I mean, how do we, how do we get into this perfume? It's such a complex thing to, to broach as a subject. I mean, yeah. You can't really just like dive into it. It's, uh, there's history in it. It involves a bit of philosophy, mm. a bit of literature, and obviously a bit of politics yeah. from our current situation. Uh, situation where we are. And, uh, you know, it's been my belief as an artist and as a student, I would say, of philosophy and of the arts, mm. that without actually addressing the current existential crises that man faces, mm. You can't really have art. No. You know, some people, they, you know, and to each their own, but some people believe that the arts are just a, a, a escape mm. operate, you know, escapes the system, like a mechanism, you know, like kind of almost like taking drugs. Yeah, yeah. You know, like you, you have this artwork, you behold a vista into uh, this picturesque, mm. poetic. Another time. Another, another time, you know, like a romantic, you know, like, flights of the imagination kind of thing yeah and that's art well to me i mean we're actually it's like kind of like digging your head in the sand mm. and pretending that everything is what it's not yeah. <laughs> <laughs> everything's ticking and moving yeah i mean man has always been a, a creature of trials and travails and we've always had as you know as a race we've had our fair share of tribulations mm -hmm. and if you think back on historic times other than ours like the napoleonic wars for example mm -hmm. or uh, world war one horrendous you know or like the you know like christopher columbus you know mm -hmm. like discovering america yeah if i mean if he was the one who actually that's also another subject for discussion yeah, yeah. <laughs> we won't get into that yeah let's not get into that but yeah. i mean some people think that this is the, the very best time to be alive, you know, even with our everything, that all the tumultuous events that we have just lived through for the past three years. We've been in terms of like luxuries and in terms of how easy in theory life is supposed to be, you've got everything at your fingertips. Yeah. We can turn on the tap and get clean water. Yeah. We can order food, whatever food that we want to eat. But spiritually, things have never been more difficult there's a cost mm. there's a cost that we have to pay and that's that's what i you know that's that's what i see as my uh point of inspiration and point of departure in this particular work in that there's this spiritual cost that you have to pay in order to have the, exactly these uh, conveniences and these mm. luxuries that you're talking about um to the point where we're talking of having people like microchipped mm -hmm. so they can conduct the transaction. Yeah, so, you know, like you, you get a chip in your hand, you go to the cash register, you, you show your hand and... Well, the, 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 so slowly working towards that, you got bank before you had to enter your pin. Uh, then it became contactless. Then now it's on your mobile phone. So obviously the next logical step, it's inside your, your body. Not a painless process, but it doesn't last too long, not too difficult. Minor surgical procedure, which basically involves uh, a little chip the size of, I suppose, of a grain of rice being inserted under your skin. Uh, and you can then go off and have it programmed and then do various things inside the building. Yeah, yeah. And that, I mean, that has, that has these grotesque uh, implications for, for freedom, for being, you know, grounded in, you know, as, as a natural being. I mean, we are, at the end of the day, uh, beings of or, or organic matter. Flesh and blood. Yeah, we're going to decay. I mean, we're going to turn mm. to rot if you think about our ultimate destination. And so this idea that we are these computerizable creatures, I mean, people talk, even they talk about brain implants. There, there was something about like Elon Musk was talking about something similar to that uh, recently, where yeah. it was going to, something that was loaded into the brain where it could essentially heal any condition that the brain had. Well, yeah, heal is... Uh, that, that, would be a, yeah. that would be a good way of looking at it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, Klaus Schwab, he talked about this at uh, one of the recent uh, WEF conferences. He mm. said that uh, in 10 years from now, they, they call it Agenda 2030. 
I'll be sitting here and I can read your thoughts because each of you has a brain implant. And is there anything more terrifying than that, that even your own thoughts aren't you? Can you imagine that in 10 years when we are sitting here, we have an implant in our uh, brains and um, I can immediately feel, because you all will have implants, I can, and we measure your, your brain waves. Right. Even your own thoughts are not your own yeah. anymore. You can't, I mean, you can't, you can't will anything, the free will. That's the one thing I think about with all these robots and all these AI technologies that are being deployed and developed now as we live in this time here. Um, you cannot bequeath free will mm. to these things. No, right? they, they have to follow instructions. Exactly. So a robot can never desire something. Mm. You know, you, you cannot impart volition no. to a machine or empathy or empathy yeah, or compassion greed or yeah. you know love suffering you can't feel anything mm. right so if our lives are being suddenly based on these technologies that are ai driven mm. right so what's going to happen to the defining characteristics of our humanity mm. you know the ability to feel empathy yeah compassion mm. Uh, love, uh, pity, yeah. mercy, mm. uh, friendship. Uh, can you become friends with this machine? I mean, you know, try becoming friends with this uh, chat GPT thing. Yeah. See if it'll, it'll... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, I mean, some people have tried that as well. Some people actually, actually probably have a crush yeah. on it. <laughs> yeah, no, you, you hear about that though. You hear about people that like get married to like, com- you know, like computer people and stuff like that, like cartoons and stuff like that on the computer in some parts of the world. They get married to Yeah, them. they get married to like um, anime and stuff I, like I'm, that. I'm not in the, I mean, I'm not in the know about these things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I must be in the dark. <laughs> Still underground writing my, my underground man's notes. Yeah. <laughs> so the, the perfume that uh, I'm talking about, which is actually not just a perfume as we just discussed, it's this whole philosophical exposition on our condition mm. on where we are as, as humanity at this point in, in, in time, right? Uh, comes from a great philosopher, a so-called great philosopher that I studied in my youth. Uh, Friedrich Nietzsche is his name. Mm. In English, you might say Frederick Nietzsche. Yeah. Right. Uh, and uh, what Nietzsche was known for is his uh divorcing morality from life mm-hmm. so it's like uh beyond good and evil he said right so that's one of the titles of his books what, what does he mean by that it means that these things are imagined that they're postulated by in his case you know the christian uh, dogma you know mm-hmm. uh, priests people that wanted to control society in the yeah. old methods of control they had good and evil and yeah. their eternal consequences. Exactly, yeah. So you had, you know, if you did something that was not deemed to be ethical in, mm-hmm. in the societies where these things were uh, implemented, you were punished and then you were actually told that you would face eternal damnation. Eternal right. damnation, yeah. if you, if you're, for, for example, if you kill someone. Yeah. You know? Now what Nietzsche said is that these things are actually just made up. Mm. There's no such thing as good and evil. They're just figments of the imagination and they don't really exist in Mm -hmm. reality. Why? Because as Nietzsche said in another of his books, uh, Alsprich Zarathustra, which is uh, uh, thus spoke Zarathustra, the the ancient philosopher and uh, sage, uh, as he said, they said, God is dead, quote unquote, right? So, that was, I mean, and if you ask anybody who never studied any philosophy, what's Nietzsche known for? Mm. It would have, God is dead. That's mm. what Nietzsche. I've heard that quote before. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's where it comes from. Yeah, yeah. That's where it comes from. So it's Nietzsche's philosophy. Now, that's quite a scary thing, isn't it? That's quite a scary sort of like view to. I mean, what do you make of that? Like, with the first thing that comes to mind if, once you hear I, something like that. I, I think like. Psycho, you know, like almost like sociopathic, almost and like psychotic, and almost like and like going back to the the robotic side of things, where there's no good, there's no evil. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So there's no good, there's no evil. Meaning, God is no longer 
legislating these things. He doesn't have the power, yeah. according to Nietzsche, to, to enforce these things. Yeah. And therefore, we only have one choice, and that choice is to become superhuman, yeah. which is... I say it's satanic in nature. Well, I mean, like there, there, I mean for example, uh, I think Alistair Crowley, who was a known you know, occultist and, and, and black magician, yeah. um, he, he said that do, do what thou will shall be the whole of the world, I meaning do what you want. Yeah, and and it was against the concept of sort of good and evil that there is just you just do and then that's it. And then there's no accountability. Mm, no accountability. Yeah, you so do what you will. This enormous capacity of man to feel guilt, and then to face, which is what I mean, I, I want to touch on in, in just a bit, to face consequences. Mm. So for the things that you do. Yeah, I mean, but that's justice. That's the whole idea of I mean, justice. That's, that's justice. And it's, it? not, it's, not, it's not an idea. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, an, it's, it's like a law of, of nature, if yeah. you will. Right? It's, let's say you, 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 know, you don't believe in God, right? Um, karma, as some people call Karma, it. they could. It's still, that's belief in God, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. Because you're believing in unseen powers taking you to task yeah. for what you've done. Now, you, can, you, know, you can define the deity... You know, but under whatever name you want, mm. you, know, you can say Yahweh, you can say God, you can mm. say Allah, mm. right? You can, you can. I mean, people have their own uh, faiths and their own beliefs, right? But the thing is that everybody knows that. Okay, if I do this, there are consequences. This will happen. I mean, even if I, you know, if someone like Nietzsche's followers that are the microchip mm. people that were, were actually we talked about just a bit. Uh, ago, right? Mm. Brain implant people, yeah. Have these agendas, yeah. People that actually you find they're not beyond good and evil because if you get to the bottom of where they come from, they're, they're I mean, they're squarely in the camp of of uh, satanistic, yeah. Really evil, evil, ritualistic devil worship. Yeah. I mean, yeah. this is what it is. I mean, yeah. that, that's what. That's why you have these people, you know, like uh, uh, doing things to children. You know, on islands away from any sort of legislature where they can be taken to task. And it seems to be a common theme them. amongst the elite that. Right. Yeah. So the elite is squarely in the camp of what? Of evil, isn't it? Mm. If they're doing this kind of things, if they're enslaving in their own, you know, words, humanity to the point where they can read your thoughts, mm. they can control your will, they can, you know, they can, you're not free to even. Wish anything anymore. Yeah. And it goes, it goes back to almost like 1984. Yeah. For the yeah. thought police. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, I mean, there is a simple thing to me as, as a believer in God, you know, and a Muslim, right? So I, it's just, the writing is on the wall. I mean, people, they responded to Nietzsche in this very uh, blatant and uh, quite uh, obvious uh, Away when he said God is dead, mm. you, you must have seen the caricature that people drew. Mm. Uh, and then you know Nietzsche is dead. God after Nietzsche died. Right? Mm. <laughs> <I> mean, <laughs> there's something much more frightful than that because we know that Nietzsche was going to die, right? and we know that that everybody's going to die, and that's God's doing, isn't it? As he has said in the in the holy book, mm. is that every soul sh shall taste of death. Yeah. Right, but there's this other thing of this uh, this notion of to touch back on good and evil, if you will. Okay, accountability and how God is what He says in the book, in the Quran. In Allah is al hisab. Indeed, Allah is swift of recompense, mm. meaning He will pay you back in, in, in cash yeah. instantly. Mm. You, you're going to get what you deserve immediately. Mm. And so there's this thing, which actually I find it quite shocking as a, as a student of philosophy myself. You got all these thinkers, all these doctorate holding, you know, chairs in the departments of philosophy, all these book writers and people that love and adore Nietzsche, right? Mm. And they don't see that Nietzsche actually went mad at mm. the end of his life. And he lived basically the last decade of his life just in, as a total vegetable. He was totally mm -hmm. insane. He was non-responsive. God, before he did what they described in their caricature, like Nietzsche is dead mm -hmm. for taking his life, mm -hmm. he put another much bigger sign there for everybody to look at and mm -hmm. behold that this person who actually 
claims to be a master of the mind. Because what is philosophy? What's philosophy? What's philosophy? Yeah, yeah, it's the mind. Philosophy is the science of the mind, mm -hmm. right? It's like here's the thought. If you read like Immanuel Kant, like the critique of pure reason, it makes your head explode. I mean, it's, it's so deep and so difficult to understand about how thoughts and, and concepts are formed in the brain. Mm -hmm. Right, so philosophy is in and of itself the science of the brain, mm. if you will, the, you know, the, the, the study of human thought itself. Mm. Right? And what did God do with Nietzsche? And what happened to Nietzsche, like in terms of his good and his evil that he did right, mm. in, in his entire work? The illustration, the, the outcome, the consequence of that is that he literally lost his entire cognitive abilities. He went mad. Mm. He was... He became a dummy. He became a, you know, just like a demented just person. Just unable, unable to think. Unable to think. His, you can see the pictures of his mustache, like, growing over his mouth. Mm. He couldn't, I mean, he couldn't even say anything about mm. that. He was gone. Mm. And so God put this living proof of, exactly. like, okay, you know, this is, where does that lead, that type of thinking? Where is it? You can see. You can see it yeah, for yourself. Exactly. So if this man was right, then don't follow with his thoughts and see what happens. And if he knew the truth and yeah. if what he said had any value, mm. he wouldn't be here now in this in this situation, this yeah. condition, so hopeless, yeah. so helpless. I mean, he, he needed his sister to, to wipe him after he, you know, after he believed himself. Yeah. And people don't think about this. No. You know, it's like, oh yeah, no, he was a great philosopher. Yeah. Well, actually he wasn't because his thinking had consequence. His philosophy led to his imminent insanity. Mm. And, and it's, I mean, it's spread, spread amongst people whereby they become wicked as a result of it. Exactly. You think that there's no good, there's no without, evil. Without taking a warning from, yeah. his, from, from his fate. Yeah. You know, without actually taking that food for thought. Okay, why did he become insane? Mm. Well, because he thought these thoughts. Mm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because he postulated these, these ideas that yeah. there is no good there is no evil. There, there is no God, mm. right? There is, there is simply no morality. It's so no, bleak, you know. Yeah, no, it's just so no bleak. basis for morality, and yeah. that, my friend, is the groundwork for the entire modern world yeah. that we are living. Nietzsche is the philosopher of our present day, because what, what are they doing today? I mean, what, what's happening to humans today? Well, obviously, you know, they, they plan to microchip our brains mm -hmm. and our hands, and we're not supposed to own anything, apparently. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're supposed oh, to we'll be, be happy about it. We'll be very happy, we'll be to, very own, happy to own nothing. To own nothing yeah. and let them own everything. Yeah, it's pointless. Right? <laughs> and, you know, and turn us basically into what? Into slaves. Trans, human, mm -hmm. robotic mm -hmm. beings that are under total slavery. Mm -hmm. Okay? And, and serve them. Right, so these are our liege lords, right? Our masters, mm -hmm. and that's the word he uses. If you listen to the WEF, right, the people who own these technologies, he just said in January, they will be the masters of the world. Who masters those technologies, in some way, will be the master of the world. Meaning, the world is going to have masters. It's terrifying. It's going to have owners. Yeah. People that are going to own something, and what yeah. is that? They're going to own everything. Everything. And you're going to own nothing. Nothing. Yeah. Right? Not even your own thoughts. Not even your own thoughts, or your own will, yeah. or your own desires, or your own I love. Mean, I mean, you, you yeah. can't. I mean, you, just a human experience. You're just. I mean, even animals have concepts of good and bad in a way. Right. Even if you go back to animals, you know, exactly. they, they, they have some, they have their own level of morality. They do. They don't hurt their own children. I mean, look at, you know, look at what, what a dog does. Yeah. You know, it's loyal. A dog, a dog is loyal. I mean, you, yeah. you, you take a dog and you bring him from misery to, to prosperity yeah. in your house. You feed him. And he loves you for it. He will love you yeah, his yeah. entire being. Yeah. Do that to a human being. Yeah. And then you got yourself a problem. Mm -hmm. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's. Uh, I think it was uh, George Bernard Shaw that said that. Or no, it, it, sorry, it was uh, it was Mark it was Mark Twain who said something like that. The mm -hmm. only difference between a dog and a human is that if you bring him from from destitution to to wealth, that he will never betray you after. Yeah, yeah. It was human will in a heartbeat. I mean, you know, uh, I don't want to go into any stories or anything, so, so as to not veer off of our subject here, but. Uh, 
Yeah, so transhuman, all too transhuman, mm. is the name of this perfume. Why don't I give you a swatch? Oh, of please, it? yeah, or a spritz of it. Inshallah. There we go. Wow. Uh, I want to say green. It's quite green. It's very green. But there's a sweetness in there as well. Like it's like a sort of sweetness that's coming through as well. Now Nietzsche's problem, you know, because he had a book that this entire thing was uh, was based off of. Uh, his book was ah. Human, All Too Human. Yeah. So according to Nietzsche, right? Ah, so that's where it comes from, the transhuman. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's one of Nietzsche's books was called human, all too human, meaning that you have to become what he called an ubermensch. Yeah. You have to become a superhuman. Yeah. Whereas if you're too lowly and too like, just like normal human, a creature of wants. It's like an arrogance, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's like a, 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 yeah. a, a, a yeah. the masters of the world. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, this is their, their philosophy. Obviously, that's their philosophy, isn't it? That yeah. we're back to the new one. We're not dictated by good and evil. You know, we're the masters of the world. So what are the consequences of this ideology that if, you know as humans if we embrace our humanity we are we are human all too human well the consequences is that now we are squarely on the path to becoming transhuman mm. right and all too transhuman yeah microchips uh devoid of any freedom mm. or any will you know you can only follow whatever they legislate mm. and case in point here how does how is this a uh a valid work against that. Well, as we've seen in the recent events that unfolded in the world is that there's all these huge corporate interests that yeah. took over human life itself. Yeah. Dictated. What even we water, are, even the water that we drink and everything. Water, I mean, you can't, you couldn't leave your house for how many years? I mean, in certain countries, yeah. in China, they, they still now, now that if there's a new lockdown that's taken, Taking place, I'm sure that there is. No kidding. Yeah. I, I thought that they just they just ended their lockdown. I don't know whether they're in or out of it currently. I mean, no, it's, it's, it's terrifying. Terrifying. you got drones flying around. Okay, that you got is... people leaving, you know, these uh, these uh, concentration camps. Yeah. They have these uh, spinning towers yeah. with barbed wire everywhere. Yes. Okay, and they, they posted it. They leaked some videos from these Chinese cities, and it's what the the you know the, the model for what they now in the West are going to call the fifteen minute yeah, city. Yeah. Fifteen minute city. So you're not supposed to leave the, a fifteen minute radius mm. for everything. Is, and the, and the label that's convenience. Very con and especially very green. Yeah. Very environmentally green, friendly, friendly, friendly and convenient. You, and you're you know you're you're locked into this. Uh, you never feudal, leave that space. Feudal. Yeah. Like the you know in feudalism, like yeah. you could like if you think of a surf, they couldn't leave their their their, their you know their, their, their the dog land that they had to work for the, his uh, liege lords, yeah. and because uh, they couldn't, I mean, they, and, they and, and just people apart as well. I mean, like for example, they did this whole working at home thing, and yeah. I think that a lot of that was to sort of like break apart people that had sort of some sort of social interaction. You know, they go yeah. to the office each day, they talk to each other. They don't want that. They want everybody in the little. Little areas, yeah. Where they can keep them there, feed them whatever information they want through metaverse. Yeah. You can feed them, you know, reels. You can feed them stories on on online, you know, yeah. on on Instagram, Facebook, all of these social media platforms. Mm -hmm. Distraction, yeah, constant flip, flip, flip. You know, reels. you get you get your. They, they've cracked the code of what what it takes to to induce dopamine mm -hmm. in the brain, mm -hmm. right? And you become addicted to that. Yeah. So first thing people do, look at the fan. Yeah, it's, together. it's like start like, okay, do I get any likes? Yeah. Okay, there's, a, I can like this. Let me like that. Let me share this. Yeah. Okay, and so it's like, what are we becoming? Yeah. You know. So my my question and my my postulation in this in this work is actually a little bit of resistance. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because just like we have big pharma that basically dictated what every person was and was not allowed to do in the world. Yeah. Uh, they have other corporate branches in, in their uh, corporate world that dictate what we, you know, what we can wear as a fragrance. Mm -hmm. IFRA is the equivalent of Pfizer mm -hmm. in the fragrance world. Yeah. You know, many people don't know that, that the perfume that you wear 
is the equivalent of a COVID vaccine, yeah. you know, because it's, it's, it's been legislated mm -hmm. by this super body of a, of a conglomerate system. Unelected as well. Unelected, yeah. you know, and what they do, the extent to which they will go in order to restrict the use of natural ingredients, mm -hmm. you know, you can't have real jasmine past a certain amount. You can't have rose past a certain amount. Mm. You can't have this. You can't use that. This is an irritant. This is a danger. This is this. And what can you have? Well, you can have these chemicals mm. that are found in, uh, you know, in the window cleaners yeah. and Clorox and these kind of things. And by the way, our friend sells these. Yeah, and you can <laughs> find. And they, they own the companies that produce the chemicals, mm. and they own the regulatory bodies of the EU that, that legislate these rules. Mm. And they own the, the uh, regulatory bodies that restrict what I can send to you. Mm. So now all of you that are getting charged customs duties all of a sudden, when you weren't, mm. it's because of this. Mm. It's because they want you to buy what's in your 15-minute city, yeah. in your circle that's been produced and packaged according to their rules, their regulations, and their legislation. Mm. Okay, And you cannot have something that is crude, that is raw, mm. that is wild, so that is natural. natural. This is actually an aberration. Yeah. Like this is a crack in the system yeah. that you can still have these perfumes yeah. that we make. Yeah. Okay, I think very soon people are not be able to have these perfumes anymore mm. just because of the degree to which they're legislating these restrictions. Well, soon, I have no doubt that it'll be illegal at some point. I mean, it's we'll already, make, it's already, it's illegal. already, yeah, it's yeah. already, I mean, you, you cannot sell an EO perfume in a shop in Europe. It's crazy. You know, I cannot legally sell any of my perfumes in a European perfume store. But yet they can sell cigarettes. They can sell food, toxic food that will make you well. I mean, they've got the sugar, sugar, galore. They, they've got bleach. Alcohol. They've got bleach in your drinking water. Yeah, yeah. 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 Chlorine in the drinking water. Chlorine in the drinking water. Fluoride. Fluoride, the drinking Fluoride water. killing your children's developing yeah, brains. Yeah, yeah. Okay, well, it's good for your teeth. Yeah. Oh, yeah, you make sure your teeth. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that is the excuse that they use. They said, oh, well, it's to make sure that you've got nice, clean teeth. So. Yeah. Just like you have to have certain injections mm. in order to make sure you've got a nice bill of health, yeah. you're eating healthy, yeah. and uh, roll up for another booster. All of these things are designed to control, mm. command, mm. and restrict and enslave. Mm. Okay, and with the corporate interest comes the legislatory power to do that mm. because they go hand in hand. It's okay. Okay. That's cool. corporatism. It's fascism, isn't it? It's fascism. Mm. It's fascism. And so, what I want to say with this perfume, I mean, I apologize, we haven't, uh, we haven't gone into the notes <laughs> at all, yeah, yeah. but it's because the meaning and the, the, the foundation for it is so much more important to me than actually, I mean, obviously we're going to get to the notes, right? But if we don't cover what this is all about, if we don't get the message of it, what, what is this actually, what does it signify? Mm. What does it symbolize? Mm. What are we talking about here? Why do I have a, an AI picture of Nietzsche looking like a robot mm. on the bottle? Mm. Okay, what is that all about? It's about this. Mm. Okay, we didn't go in depth into the philosophy behind Albanian Van Gogh, Mashbit Pavarotti and Musk Morisco, mm. because I wanted to see the response of our friends and our fans mm. to these perfumes and to see what they made of it. Mm. Okay, what did they get from it? And apparently, uh, you know, it, it, the outcome, you know, and Allah bless everyone who contributed, but the outcome was not what I had planned. Like the, the philosophical, and probably we'll, we'll get together one, one of these days and mm -hmm. just go over these perfumes one by one yeah, so that we're all on the same page here. But each one is a work of not only perfumery, but also philosophy yeah. and also political theory mm -hmm. and history. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll get it, we'll get to everything. But with this transhuman thing, this is where we are now. This is where we are now. And there is a lockdown in effect, and your your fragrance purchasing ability is under lockdown. Yeah. And that's why your customs authorities are knocking on your door mm. and sending you these emails. Keep you in that pound of flesh. 30 euros. 40 euros for what? For something that's declared to be 20 euros. Yeah, they pull it out. Yeah, it's but, like, it's restriction. Yeah, it is. It is. They want to restrict our ability to give you something that is not from their legislative 
restrictions. Yeah. Like I, I, I give you a perfume that doesn't conform. Yeah. Right. It doesn't conform to any of their postulations that this much jasmine, this much rose, you have to use this, you can't use that. No, I can use everything. Yeah. You use what you want, you've got free use. I can use whatever I want. Yeah. Okay, I can use animal substances. Mm. Okay, I can use whatever my God, who, 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 who is actually very much alive, yeah. okay, made available to me as an artist yeah. on this earth. And he said, and we subjugated to you all of everything that is on earth yeah. for your use. Yeah. Okay, as a sign mm. to show you that look, look how, how much we have blessed you. Mm. Everything is for you. Mm. Okay, so will you now be thankful? And they want to take that away. They want to take that away and say, no, you can't use this and you can't use that. This is restricted. This is not allowed. Uh, you cannot buy from this country. You cannot buy from that country. No. You know why? Because you have to buy from your 15 minute city. Yeah. You know what? So. And the UK is definitely getting more and more like that, especially with like the restrictions with other, other countries and the high taxes are bringing things into the UK. I think all countries are going the same way. It's saying. just a system of milking and of subjugating and of turning people into serfs and uh, and the virtual slaves is what what we all are under the system. And so this is my if everyone does a little bit, mm. okay, to actually to contribute their own, you know, uh, rebellion, mm. if you will. You know, contribute their own uh, disobedience and say, you know what, I'm not going to comply. Mm. Non-compliance, non-conformism is now more important than ever. Yeah. Because if we conform, if we comply to these rules and these limitations, we're just basically extending our hands and extending our heads for them yeah. to put the chips in yeah. and say, you know what, you're just going to be, uh, it's just going to be a lifeless thing that, that has no free will, that has no volition, that has no nothing. Mm. You know, just a shower of no human experience at all. Just a robot. A robot. Mm. Yeah, just a robot. Mm. And this, this this whole AI thing is is that don't think anymore. Mm. Don't write. And the drip feeding this into us slowly I mean like for example there's there's been programs as well on uh, the future where you know we'll have robots as our servants and stuff like that. Yeah. And now we have robots as our servants already because if you go to this uh, chat thing and then you put in whatever you want it to write, Anything. To, yeah, yeah. it'll do it for you. Yeah. So what does that mean? That means that soon enough, nobody will be able to write a single sentence. Mm. They won't be able to communicate. They won't be able to create. Because they'll have no practice at it. They'll just be relying on the AI for everything. It's like your muscles. If you yeah. don't use your muscles, they atrophy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So you got people not using their heads anymore. Yeah. You got people not writing, you know, not thinking, not sitting down and, 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 and you know, just doing the work. Even like with grammar and stuff like that, like for example, like they've got spell check, it just does it all for you. So people aren't really bothered about grammar, and, you know, pronouncing things correctly and stuff like that either. Yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a sad state of affairs. And it's, it's, it is, as we said, a transhuman, all, all too trans, it's not human anymore. Mm. It's not human anymore. So why don't we, uh, you know, having covered all of that, uh, why don't we look at the smell mm. a bit? Green, very green. But it's, it's a papuan who's in there somewhere. Exactly. So you got green papua. Green papua. Yeah. Okay, and you got wild Indian chus. These are the two, yeah, the two yeah. pillars of this fragrance because I there is nothing to be more mm. vegetal mm. and and full of life and verve and pulsating with that lush scent of the earth, mm. you know, which is unpolluted, un undefiled by these uh, by these things. Okay, as that green vetiver, the, the, the green chus from India, mm. wild chus, you know, the actual roots of, of life, that's what it, it symbolizes. And then you have this Aboriginal Papuan uh, Aboriginal Papuan greenness of, of agarwood, you know, to just ride the top of, of that vetiver. Yeah. You know, and it Compliments so perfume. beautifully. Yeah. And it's like you're wearing a nude, but you're wearing a fragrance at mm. the same time. But at the same time, do you think that it captures any facets of that Nietzsche, transhuman, robotic, ominous thing in the background? Like, is, is there something? Does it pulsate? Like, does it sound like Rammstein, for example? 
Yeah, I mean, the, 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 the greenness has a sort of... Um, I'm trying to think of the word. Not metallic, but, you know, like, very sharp and very sort of... In the back? Yeah, yeah. There is this robotic, clinical... Yeah. There's this dichotomy. But it's almost like contrasted with the... the, the, the yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So there's the war. Yeah. There's between war. the two. Between yeah. the two. Yeah, yeah. Between... Yeah. You know, the transhuman aspect of but, this. But the, but the greenness is so full of life. It, it just, yeah, it just yeah. keeps shouting back at yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? So you, you got this clean cut it's unstoppable. glass. It's unstoppable. Yeah. yeah. You got glass, metal, robotics, transhumanism on the one side dictating the form. Mm. And then you have this life and this, yeah. this these roots screaming out of the earth with yeah. green vigor and power yeah. in Papua Nagar with the shouting at the back and, and then and then and then subject it down. Yeah, yeah. It down. Because and it's somewhere in the background but it's there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. That's that's what I mean that's the whole message of this perfume. And I you know I just love the smell because mm. it's like it makes me live in the now. Yeah. You know, and I, I, I'm like grounded in where I am now, right? And it, it's an absolute perfect reflection of my of my dilemma as a human, you know, being. Yeah. Uh, as an artist who is also wants to create something original, living in this day and age. Yeah. What is what is the dilemma that we are living in? And it is exactly what this perfume expresses. It's so uh, it's incredible. How you've managed to sort of like capture that, I mean, the, that it's just like drafting and redrafting mm-hmm. and chiseling and. Well, re- I know, I know how much you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think we'll. I think we'll. That that's a good. That's a good uh, brief uh, encapsulation of this entire thing. Mm-hmm. I think we'll call it a day for today. Thanks for tuning in, guys. Thank you. Guys. And we'll we'll see you shortly again next time. Take care. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.